Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. In this week's Fusion Friday, we're going to talk about creating hems in sheet metal. So let's take a look on how we can do this. So unfortunately right now there's not a quick and easy way to create hems inside of Fusion Sheet Metal. So I'm going to show a couple tips that will hopefully speed up your design process. So I'm going to start with a um, steel inch sheet metal rule. Uh, I've already created the, the starting flange. Then I'm going to come in and select these two edges. And let's just go ahead and start to drag straight up so we can kind of see what that looks like. Now, the first thing I want to do is specify my height. So I'm going to say I want a 0.75 inch flange. And you'll notice as I start to fold this over, some weird things happening. So you'll notice that the bend is actually kind of like rolling into my part. So it's actually changing the overall size of my part. And then you'll also notice that the, the uh, 0.75 is kind of changing as we're rolling this over. And that's actually due to some of these settings over here. So what you want to do is you'll notice under height datum we have interfaces, outer faces, and tangent to bend. And so I want to set tangent to bend and what that means is it's going to be 0.75 from the tangent edge of this bend to here. And now you'll notice when I move this that that length is not changing anymore. However, it's still kind of rolling into my part. And that is this bend position. So I'm going to change that from inside to tangent. And you can kind of see it jump. And now when I rotate this, you'll notice that the bend is staying put, the 0.75 is staying put. But watch what happens when I get to 180 degrees. You can kind of see it basically fails. It just can't do that. So to solve that, what I typically do is put in 179.99, so really close to 180 degrees. And we get this result. Well, it's still standing off of my part quite a bit. So to change that, I'm going to go into Override Rules, and I'm going to turn on Bend Override. And by default, it's using um, a, you know, a formula to figure out what this bend radius is. Well, we're going to override that. Let's just make this really small. In fact, I'm going to say 0 0.001. And we can see, in fact, if I look at the front here, we can see a really tiny gap right there. And we've now created a hem that goes along those two edges. And I like using the flange command because it has this miter corners option built in. If that was turned off, you see we would get an error message. It's going to fold one and fold the other, but they would intersect. So we'll turn on miter corners. Now the last thing is I don't want this round relief right here. So that is this two bend corner override. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and you can see the relief shape is set to round. Well, let's do maybe like a tear or an arc weld, for example. I'm just going to say tear, and we can see how that makes a little bit more sense for something like this. And I'll say OK. Now, the last thing is this gap right here. Uh, not a lot of people know about this, but that's actually a formula setting. And if I go into Modify Sheet Metal Rules, You'll notice it says in this design we have steel inch. I'm going to expand that open and it says miter rip or seam gap is set to 0.1. Well, where is it getting that? Well, if I hover over the pencil icon, I can edit the existing rule that's in the design. So I'm going to say edit rule and we can see miter rip and seam gap is set to thickness. Well, what is thickness? Well, that is 0.1. So this gap is 0.1 wide. So I could come in here and say, I want that to be much smaller. So I could say thickness divided by four, for example, or I could type in like 0 0.002 or whatever. So by default, it's going to be whatever thickness is, but you can come in and change that and watch what happens when I say, okay, or save. 
you can see how that changed that gap to be much tighter. In fact, if I come in, let's go ahead and add some more flanges or edit this, these flanges. Let's add those two edges there. We can see what that looks like. I could even come in and add this bottom edge and top edge and we get a really nice looking hemmed, you know, plate cover or something like that. Now that seemed like a lot of steps, but it's actually pretty quick um, once you have everything set up. In fact, uh, check this out. I'm going to go ahead and create a new component. Um, let's just do, I'll just keep it simple here. Um, let's just do a, a rectangle like so. And here's another tip. When I go ahead and say uh, flange, and I start to drag, while well, you're thinking, oh, I have to type in all of those settings again. Well, if I, let me go ahead and start to rotate this. You'll notice it's remembering my, my last settings here. And if I hover over this height, you can see it says it's 0.1397. If I come to these three little dots, it's gonna remember my last settings. And here's that 0.75. Same thing with the angle, it's at 116. I just click those three little dots and there's my 179.99. And I just set you know those settings. And then the last thing I would have to do is come into the override, bend override, same thing. Click those dots, 0 0.001. And there we go. So I only really have to do it once um, and then I can reference those um, just from those three little dots. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.